I'm so glad to see you. Just want to encourage you for a minute. Um, you know, so many times we are feeling the need for the Lord to be with us and touch us personally. I know um, uh, this hap this I feel this way all the time, pretty much. And I hope you guys do too, because life can be so difficult sometimes that we just like, God, I need a touch. God, I need you to strengthen me. God, I need you to help me. And the thing is that we develop this mentality or this paradigm. And sometimes it's just by accident and sometimes it's by false teaching or whatever. But we develop this mentality or this paradigm that God comes and goes, you know, that sometimes he's with you and then uh, and touching you and helping you. And sometimes he like pulls back. And the fact is that God is always with us. And why is God always with us? Well, because it's who he is. The Bible says that he is everywhere at one time. Okay, so it is not possible for him not to be with us. But you know what? Um, it's not only not only does the Bible teach us that the Lord doesn't come and go, but that he's always here. But I want you to know that the Bible also teaches us that he's always helping us, that he is always sustaining you, that he is always personally caring for you. That even in those times when you don't feel like the Lord is really moving in your life or really touching you or that you don't feel like he's near, he is. He is near. I know that sometimes it's hard when we don't feel it. Hey, I love to feel just like everybody else, right? I'm a uh, melancholy, choleric personality type. I don't know. I don't remember what the letters are, you know, the D-I-S-C. Um, I think I'm... I don't remember. It's been years since I've done one of those, but I will just tell you, melancholy, choleric, that's me, uh, big feeler, big emoter, you know, and so I love to feel the presence of the Lord just like anybody else, but here's the thing. God is always, whether we feel him or not, whether we see the manifestation and the miracles and all the sensational stuff or not in any given moment, God is always touching us. He is always helping us. He is always with us, and right now, no matter how you feel, God is with you. He's with you to comfort you. He is perfecting everything that concerns you right now, right this very second. Why? Because God, not only, not only is it in his nature, but he is obsessed with you. He loves you so much. And today I'm going to be teaching a class here in just a few minutes I'll, uh, at 12 noon Eastern time. So that's two hours and five minutes away. Um, I'm going to be teaching a class about how the Lord is so obsessed with love for you that he can't keep himself away, even from manifesting himself in person. You know what? I think it'd be neat. This just occurred to me. When we get to heaven, wouldn't it be neat to see a video replay of all the times that Jesus showed up and personally stood at your bed and stroked your hair while you were sleeping? Wouldn't it be neat to see a video of all the times that you were driving in a car and you almost had an accident and it wasn't an angel, but it was actually Jesus Christ himself who came and put his hand on the car and pushed you out of the way of that accident or out of the way of being a more serious accident. Wouldn't it be neat to see all the times that God himself was working behind the scenes of your life, bringing you into alignment with people, places, and things, bringing you into alignment with the right circumstances, working things out for your good on your behalf. Wouldn't it be amazing to see that video? Because right now you and I are living in that video of God's obsessive love, but we don't always recognize it because we don't always take the time to dig out the gems of his love out of scripture. His love and his goodness is for you. God is obsessed with you. God's heart beats for you. He created you so that he could have you as a son or a daughter because he loves you so much and his heart beat for you all and always has. The Bible says that before God formed you in the womb, he knew you. Before God formed you in the womb. That means that somehow in heaven, you existed in the bosom of the Father. I'm not saying you were floating around in heaven, you know, like a little cupid on a cloud or anything like that. No, the Bible doesn't support that. But 
in the bosom of the Father, somehow you existed. And then there came a moment when God, out of his great love and out of his redemptive plan for the world, he knew that the very moment of your conception arrived and he took you and he threw you on the womb of your mother so that you could be born for such a time as this. And his love, which was with you then, is with you now because his heart still beats for you. God loves you. He loves you so much. He is with you right now. He is an ever-present help in trouble. He is near to those who are brokenhearted. He is the friend who sticks closer than, the, than a brother. He loves you. And you know what? Out of that great redemptive love, God after creation, you know, when when life was perfect in the Garden of Eden, God himself in person walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden. We read that in the book of Genesis. Isn't that amazing? But you know what we don't often pay attention to? We don't pay attention to the fact that God did not stop doing that. Because we often get this uh, paradigm or this understanding that's a wrong understanding that says after men fell, God retreated to heaven and was no longer personally involved, personally showing up in person in the lives of the children that he had just created. And that is not true. That is not true. Ever since creation, God has continuously been on the earth, continuously showing himself to people, continuously showing up just to talk, continuously obsessed with you, and continuously just has wanted to spend time with us. And so he has shown up consistently. I want you to rest in knowing that God is obsessed with you and he personally, personally is with you and personally wants to actually manifest himself to you so that you can see him. Remember what Jesus said in the Beatitudes? He said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. That doesn't mean they will see God at the end of days when you go to heaven. Of course, you will see God then. Everybody will see God then. Actually, even the wicked will see God. Even the demons will see God because every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So everybody's going to see God then. So why did Jesus say, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God? Because you can see God now. Jesus said, I believe it's in John chapter 14, that he who loves me, I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. That's what Jesus said. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Jesus himself is available to you to walk and talk with you and commune with you. Today, I'm going to be teaching a class in a less than two hours now um, that contains what I believe is probably the greatest revelation, not probably is, the greatest revelation of Jesus Christ that the Lord has ever given me. A deeper revelation of his salvation, a deeper revelation based on many of his appearances in the Old Testament and based on some of the truths and mysteries of the Bible that actually the Bible states pretty clearly, but a lot of times people are hesitant to pick them up. It is going to be a life transforming class. So far, we have people who have signed up, let's see, um, but we still have room, um, a good amount of room. Yes, I just checked. Yes, we do. And you need to be there, okay? You're not buying revelation, but you are buying the opportunity to sit under teaching. Where I have studied this for hours and, in fact, years. And uh, you could go and you could study the same thing for hours and years. And you can get the same revelation by the Holy Spirit. Or if you want the revelation faster, you can sign up for the class. I really want you to be there. It's only $25 for a two-hour class, and a free video replay comes with that, okay? It is going to be powerful because it is going to be about the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And this is spiritual meat, okay? I will tell you this. This is not going to be spiritual milk. 
though. I mean, spiritual milk is good, obviously. You know, repentance, the Bible teaches us the spiritual milk and the, the simple things are like repentance from dead works and eternal life and so on. That's awesome stuff. That's life-changing, obviously. But you know what? We need to go on. Uh, the Bible says, let us go on to to the spiritual meat, to the harder concepts. And that's what this is going to be. But it's not going to be hard like you won't be able to understand it. It's just going to be deeper. Like it's going to hit you at the gut level, like deep in the deepest part of your gut. And it's going to be like, oh, like a sword piercing your gut in a good way. Okay, this is not like a word of rebuke. This is a word of revelation about the person of Christ as he is revealed throughout the scriptures, particularly the pre-incarnate Christ in the Old Testament. And this is not the same teaching as the whirlwind, although um, I'll, I'll briefly mention that. But for the whirlwind teaching about how God shows up in the whirlwind, you need to get that whole teaching. It's a video class that's available on our Gumroad store. But today's teaching is about the pre-incarnate Christ. Who was Jesus? What did he look like? How did he act? How did he show up before he actually came to earth in the womb of the Virgin Mary? Okay, the pre-incarnate Christ, then the angel of the Lord. Who is the angel of the Lord who keeps showing up in the Old Testament? And why does it matter so much? And what can we learn about Jesus from the appearances of the angel of the Lord? And then number three, who is Melchizedek? One of the greatest mysteries in the Bible. Who is Melchizedek? Why does he pertain to Jesus? How does he pertain to Jesus that Melchizedek pertains to you? You need to know who Melchizedek was, and it is a great mystery, but I'm going to show you the, the, the pattern, the, the truths that weave throughout the scriptures to show you what I believe the scriptures say about who Melchizedek was. You need to listen to this. It's going to change you. It's going to change you deeply with the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it's not because of me, but it's because of the power of the word ministered to you by the Holy Ghost of God. And go to our website, fromhispresence.com. That's www.fromhispresence.com. And at the very top, it says, next webinar, the pre-incarnate Christ, the angel of the Lord, Melchizedek. Click here to sign up. You just click that button and you can sign up. Because this is going to be a revelation about Jesus that is deep. It is going to be gut-wrenching. It is going to make you cry. Jesus is obsessed with you, and you need to know that, okay? I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.